Greetings, everyone. This is a podcast on balancing chemical equation. We're going to go through a couple problems to see how all these steps are going to be applied as we start balancing equations. So let's go ahead and get started. So here are the tips for balancing. I'm going to refer to these, the numbers of these different tips as we go through these problems. So keep this uh, that handout or these notes in front of you handy so that you can refer back to and pause when I mention one of these things. So the first thing we need to do, step one, is we need to form a chart and uh, divide up our reactants and our products and we're going to count all the atoms present. So when I'm looking at this here, what I like to do is I like to just draw a dotted line at that yield sign showing me the, the products and reactants where they're separate because a lot of conservation of mass says that I can't have more atoms to start with than I am going to end up with. So we have to keep track of all the atoms. So what I like to do is I like to make a little chart. So we have a magnesium, and the other element present on this side is oxygen. So I'm going to draw like a little chart over here. Uh, on the other side of the equation, I have the same compounds, magnesium and oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to count up using the subscripts how many of each atom are present on the entire side, products or reactants. So magnesium has a subscript of nothing. It's just one. I have one magnesium and oxygen I have two. I look at the other side of the equation, I have one magnesium and only one oxygen. Okay, so uh, this right now violates the law of conservation of mass because I have more oxygen to start with than I do at the end. So we can't just lose an, an atom of oxygen. We have to have a recipe that balances out. We can't lose stuff at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to add coefficients This is step two not subscripts, coefficients to balance all these numbers. So I look at the left hand side and I notice there's two oxygen, the right hand side there's only one. So we're going to put numbers in, in front, out, out in front of these, uh, these compounds in order to make those numbers balance. So I need twice the number of oxygens because oxygen only shows up once over here. I'm going to have to put a two out in front of the, the compound that has oxygen in it. So what that does, that means I have two of these whole MgO compounds, ionic compounds. So that means I need to update my chart. This is step three. So every time I add a coefficient, we update the chart. Now there's two magnesium, and now there's also two oxygen. So what this did is now my oxygens are balanced, but my magnesiums became unbalanced. So what I have to do is I have to go to step two again and add more coefficients in order to balance the numbers out. So I look at the left-hand side of the equation, and now I need twice the magnesium. So I put a two out in front here, update my chart. Always update as soon as you add a coefficient. Now I have two magnesium on both sides. This recipe is balanced. Um, I have the same number of atoms of each type on both sides of the equation. So step four says place a one in any empty coefficient location, and then reduce all to the lowest whole number ratio if needed. What that means, for example, is if I got to the end and somehow how I did things, I got 4 to 4 as my coefficients, you would need to and be expected to reduce that down to 2, 1, 2 at the very end. We're looking for the simplest recipe to make our compounder for our chemical reaction. Um, the last part here says reaction ID. What type of reaction is it? Uh, and so looking here, I have two elements that are combining together. Whenever we have uh, lesser compounds combining into, into smaller compounds, we call this a synthesis reaction. We're making something, we're taking ingredients, a lot of ingredients, and making a less number of things. We're going to call this a synthesis reaction. All right, we're going to do uh, quite a few more here today. So the next one uh, is another reaction we did in class, so we're going to start by doing the same thing. We're going to divide up our reaction and start making a list of the elements, we have H and O, and then we have H and O on this side too. So we're going to start by counting them up as is. I have two hydrogen. I have two oxygen on the left hand side. Going over to the right hand side, I have two hydrogen. And when you get to oxygen, be careful because step one says count all atoms present. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and count up all the oxygen in all of the product side. So I have one here, and I have two here. It gives me a total of three. Okay, so looking at this here, I have two, 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 three. Um, I see that there's an odd number of oxygen on the right-hand side. It's going to be very likely that if you get an odd number of things, 
you're going to need to get even. Okay. You're going to need to get even as you're balancing this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get my oxygen number to an even number. Uh, looking at my oxygens, I'm going to double the H2O because I want to get that odd number of oxygens to an even number. So I'm going to put a 2 out in front to double this. As soon as I do that, I need to update my chart. Now on the right-hand side, I have 2 times 2, there's my subscript here, 4, and then 2 times 1, oxygen, plus the 2 from the other oxygen over here, giving me a total of 4 oxygen on the right-hand side. Looking back at the left-hand side, now I have an imbalance uh, again. I need twice the amount of hydrogen and oxygen, and thankfully when I put a 2 out in front to double these, they both double at the same time, giving me 4 four, four, and four. Everything balances out. Um, so I'm going to put a one in all my empty coefficient uh, equations and um, I'm going to go ahead and figure out what kind of reaction this is. And I have a compound that is breaking into more compounds. So I have a compound and it's breaking into a compound plus a compound. We call this idea of breaking apart things a decomposition. It's decomposing. So we're going to put decomp as our reaction ID. Uh, one last note on the getting even thing. You're going to want to get even whenever you have um, odd coefficients and you just can't seem to get it to balance. You're going to try to get everything uh, get even with those odd coefficients. All right, let's keep moving. Um, next one, number three, uh, we have another reaction here. Um, and now we're going to talk about uh, step number five. It says if a polyatomic ion appears intact on both sides, uh, we're going to go ahead and treat it as one piece. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I break this up and I have copper, I have hydrogen, and I have N and O. Now I see N and O and I could break it up and you could totally do this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to notice that I have NO3 on this side and on the right hand side I have that same NO3, that same nitrate polyatomic ion, and it's actually um, still over there, completely intact. If it said something like NO2 and it actually changed a little bit, we could not do this trick. But if they're the exact same on both sides, we're going to treat that NO3, that polyatomic ion, as one chunk. Okay, that's what a polyatomic ion is, a chunk with a charge. So when I count those up, I'm going to go ahead and do Cu, we have H, and we have NO3. Now I can count them as one piece. So let's see how this works. One hydrogen, I have one. I have one nitrate, NO3. Looking at the right-hand side, one copper, two hydrogen, and three nitrates. Okay. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at step six, figuring out which one of these I want to balance first. Um, it says start with the one that appears one time per side or the ones in the most complicated molecules. Um, most of these appear only once per side uh, and only in one compound, but I'm going to look at this most complicated molecule and just start there. So I notice that nitrates I have three on this side and one on this side. So I'm going to go over to the left-hand side, and we're going to triple the amount of nitrates. And I'm going to update my chart. So this becomes A3. This becomes A3. Um, that changes some things. So now I'm going to look back to the other side. Nitrates are balanced now, at least for right now. Uh, and now I have my hydrogens are a mismatch. So I look at hydrogen, and I notice that there's two on this side and three on this side. A lot of times when you get this even odd situation, especially if that element only shows up in one once on one side and one time on each side of the equation, you're going to have to do something called going to the lowest common multiple. So if I have three and I have two, what is the lowest common multiple between three and two? Well, three times two gives me six, and two times three gives me six. So 6 is the lowest common multiple of 3 and 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to get both of, these co uh, both of these atom numbers to 6. So I'm going to go ahead and put a 3 out in front of this thing. 3 times 2 gives me 6. And I'm going to take this uh, hydrogen on this side to 6. So I'm going to actually cross this out, update it with a 6, and then I'm going to update my chart again. Now I have 6 hydrogens and 6 nitrates. And we're going to need to do this um, as we go through. We're going to update our chart. So now our hydrogens are balanced now. Okay. Um, now we need to fix the nitrate. So I look to the right-hand side. 
I need twice as many nitrates. I need six. I have three. So I'm going to go ahead and put a two out in front to double this number. I'm going to update what that does. Updates this. And now I have six. Now I balance my nitrates. Uh, the next step is I need to look at the copper, which is still unbalanced. And I have two on the right hand side. I need two on the left. So I put a coefficient out in front. And we're going to make it two. And now we're balanced. So my final answer is two, six, three, two. Those are our coefficients needed to balance this chemical reaction. And then the last step, I'm going to look at my reaction ID. And I see a single element plus a compound is giving me a new single element plus a compound. Whenever we see that single element with a different compound, think single replacement. The copper is switching places or replacing hydrogen in this compound. As you look over here, now copper is paired up with what hydrogen was paired up with. So this is called a single replacement reaction. All right, uh, example four, we have what's called a double replacement reaction. I know it's a double replacement reaction because I have a compound plus a compound. Ki is a compound. This is actually an ionic compound plus a compound. And it's yielding a compound plus a compound. I know it's a double replacement because if you look carefully, the cations are actually switching places. K is now paired up with NO3 on this side. And PB is now paired up with I on this side. Now when they switched places, they had to uh, rebalance the charges. And we're going to learn how to do that. But this is a double replacement reaction. So we're going to start with the same steps. K, I, PB, and then NO3. Now notice, I'm going to do the same thing I did here before. I notice NO3 on both sides of the equation. Um, so I'm going to keep it as one. I'm going to break this into products and reactants. Uh, I'm going to keep it as one chunk. Okay, PB, NO3. Um, another quick note on uh, step number five. It says if you have a uh, H2O, you can treat H2O as HOH because sometimes you're going to see hydroxide, for example, by calcium hydroxide on one side of the equation. You can think of H as H2O as HOH, um, and then that's going to show you that you have hydroxide on both sides of the equation. So watch out for that one. If you're trying to find, okay, hydroxides on one side, think of water as H2O as HOH, and then you can, you can see those like terms. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, and do our balancing here. 1K, 1I, 1PB, and we have 2, uh, excuse me, 2 cross that out here, uh, two NO3s, okay, that whole piece. On the right hand side, one, one, uh, this is actually two, <laughs> two of those, one of these, and one of these. So this one's fairly simple. Uh, I'm just going to pick one of these and balance it. So I'm just going to pick the I. I have two on this side, one on this side, put a big old two out in front. Now I have uh, twice the iodide on this side, twice the potassium on this side, two, two, one, two. Everything is balanced now, except for our K. So I'm going to go to the right-hand side, and I'm going to put a 2 out in front here. And we're going to update our chart. This becomes a 2, and a 3 becomes a 2. 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 2. Everything is balanced. Okay. Fill in a 1. Move on. Done. Okay, next example. Um, this is the last one. This is a combustion reaction. Um, a quick note on the combustion reactions. Uh, very characteristic of a combustion reaction. They're always going to have uh, be taking place in the presence of oxygen, and they're always going to yield carbon dioxide and H2O. You're going to see this, uh, this reactant, oxygen, and you're going to see these products, carbon dioxide and water for every combustion reaction. And combustion reactions always involve some kind of hydrocarbon. Uh, some carbon, usually it'll be paired up uh, sometimes, just some number of carbon with some number of hydrogen. Sometimes you may see some number of carbon, some number of hydrogen, and then some oxygen. Uh, and th this is kind of like that. Uh, we have carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. So this is a hydrocarbon. There's the general form up there for combustion reaction. So we're going to start this as we do as usual. Count up our elements, C-H-O-H, C-H-O-H. 
and we're going to go ahead and count up what we have. I have one carbon. Um, I have three hydrogen plus this little H over here. Now this is a structural formula that O and H are bonded together in this compound and this is showing that. Um, but I actually am going to have the four H's. I have one O here and two over here. It's a total of three. And I did not need this extra H here. We already had, uh, we already counted for H. Okay, uh, let's go to the other hand side. Other side, one. We have two H's and three O's coming from both compounds. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, start by balancing this with step six says uh, start with elements that appear only once per side. So I'm not going to start with oxygen because oxygen actually appears twice on the right hand side and twice on the left hand side. So I'm not going to start with oxygen. We're going to save that for last. Uh, I'm going to start with hydrogen because carbon is already balanced. So I look at hydrogen on the left-hand side. I see four. I need twice as many over here. So I'm going to start by putting a two out in front. Update my chart. This becomes a four. I have two times one, which is two oxygen plus the two over in CO2, making my new total a four. Um, all right, carbon and hydrogen are balanced. Looking at oxygen, um, on the other hand side, I, I see three and I see a four. Now I have this even odd situation and what we need to do in that situation is we're going to get even so that we can get out of these odd numbers. So looking at the left hand side, I'm going to put a 2 out in front in order to get everything to an even, uh, even value. So I'm going to multiply everything by 2. I'm going to try to get that oxygen even. So 2 C's, I have now 6, uh, 7, 8 hydrogen coming now. And then I have 2 times 1 uh, is 2 plus 2, now I have 4 over here. So now my oxygens are even, but now my hydrogens and my carbons are thrown off. So I'm just going to start and pick one and balance it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start with hydrogen and balance that one. I see 8 and 4. So I'm going to go to the right hand side and I'm going to update. I now need 4 of a coefficient on my H2O to get the hydrogen count up. So I'm going to re-update. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 1 is 4 oxygen plus the two over there. My new total is six. Um, and so now we're, we're, we messed up our oxygen again, but that's okay. We're going to go back to the other side. Um, and I'm going to save oxygen for a second. And I'm going to balance the, the carbons first. Oxygen appears all over the place. So I'm going to save that one to the very end. Uh, carbon is a two over here. I'm going to go to the right hand side and put a two. And this becomes a two and then I need to recount my oxygen. So I have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 4 from my water. 4 plus 4 is 8 total. 2, 8, 8. I'm saving oxygen for last, going to the left hand side. Now I have this O2 which is going to give me the boost I need. So I need 4 more oxygen. Um, I'm going to have to up this coefficient here to 3 so that 3 times 2 is 6 plus the 2 here, 7, 8, 8, 2, balanced, hydrogen, 8, oxygen, 8, totally balanced. So my total coefficients are 2, 3, 2, 4. The other note is if you, if you get to a point where you just everything has gone wrong, you just can't seem to get it to balance, step 7 says erase everything, start over and try the next uh, multiple on your first coefficient. So I may have gone through this whole thing and had a one out here and it just may not have worked out and I may have erased everything and just said okay I'm gonna try putting a two here and then start counting up and see if I can't do that and if that didn't work I'm gonna try putting a three here. Erase it, start over, false start and then keep going until you find something that works. You're gonna have to work through these. Uh, some of them are easier than others and I hope that this was helpful.